Welcome back to another Danger Cats podcast. It's just me, your boy, Uncle Hack, in the house today. This one is brought to you by Old Smokes Coffee. We have our own coffee. That's right. And you can hit it up at DangerCatshop.com. Enough of my bullshit. Here's the episode. Welcome back, Danger Cats, to another Danger Cats podcast. Another one of Uncle Hack's thoughts. It's just me in the house today. A uh, couple of weird things to talk about. A couple of funny things to talk about. Uh, recently, in the news, old Justin JP getting popped for uh, dressing up like an East Indian fella. I don't know if anybody's seen this yet or not. I'll definitely be posting it everywhere. But the irony, this cultural uh uh phew, this cultural appropriation bullshit that they always preach, all these liberals preach. Man, I can't fucking speak today. All these liberals preach over and over again. You can't wear a kimono if you're a cracker jack. That's cultural appropriation. You can't do that. And they just dig deep. And now the ringleader is popped. He is popped for wearing a fucking turban dressed up like an East Indian back in 2001. This is fucking magnificent. I, oh God. I apologize too if you hear me like really nasally and like coughing. I got a gnarly fucking cold right now and it sucks, but... It is what it is. But back to what I'm saying is whenever uh, somebody just shoots themselves in the fucking foot, it's just the best thing ever. Liberal, conservative, it doesn't matter. Black, white, green, yellow, gay, straight. Whenever somebody shoots themselves in the foot or the classic foot in the mouth, it is, I don't know. It just, it gives me great, great joy. Great joy. Like, fuck you out here acting like you're the prince of fucking appropriation. I am a social justice warrior. And it comes down to just fuck you in the ass. Oh, God almighty. Ah, uh, ha. I fucking love it. I love it. Oh. So definitely check out that photo. It just looks like a fucking dipshit, too. He's just a cuck. Like, you know, you know those guys you meet that just, I don't even, he's exactly what you think he is, is the sad part. Well, it's not sad. No, I don't get upset about it. But you look at him and it's exactly what you expect. You know what I mean? Some dipshit you probably went and like, you know, mommy, daddy, just, oh, little Justin. Yeah, little Justin, you know him. He is just the sweetest little boy, but he's the one like lighting shit on fire when nobody's looking and blaming other kids, blaming the poor people, blaming the poor people. I love that ad too, where he's like riding the subway like it's a big deal. Like, fuck, why do politicians do that? You know, they do regular people things and put them into commercials to make them feel like one of the one of the one of the people one of the boys you know I'm out here on the fucking bus like the rest of you fucking bums riding around like fuck could you imagine if that dipshit came onto a bus like uh depending where he is i guess alberta i don't see that happening ever get this tar beat out of his ass he get the brakes beat off his ass could you imagine that could that be all over the fucking headlines the I would be dying laughing. Oh, oh, fuck. All day reading that. It's like that video of that old dude that just like beat the fucking tar out of him <laughs> in that sparring when they're sparring in that uh, boxing gym. <laughs> it never gets old. It's one of my favorite fucking things. Oh, boy. Another thing that I found hilarious this week is Bang Bros fronting up $10 million to put a bid on the Miami Heat's arena. That is just hilarious. And they want to name it the BBC. <laughs> the BBC Arena. The Bang Bo- uh, the Bang Bros Center. Oh, man. Like how... <laughs> oh, man. I love that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like, 
just like subtle little digs you, you know you, you gotta be a fucking weirdo to understand what the fuck they're, t- they're trying to get at but that is just that's next level could you imagine if they get that and that arena is actually called the bbc for a, a basketball team like let's call the kettle black here not trying to be racial by saying the kettle is black by any means i'm just saying the stereotype is black dudes got big dicks the arena is the bbc basketball teams are predominantly black it's hilarious it's a great joke and it's a long running joke long like schlong long schlong arena the bbc you got me boys you following me you picking up what i'm putting down that is just comedy gold you can't buy that you can't script that who's ever running bang bros you are a fucking genius i hope this happens for you i might even go to the bbc arena just to say that i've seen the bbc i've seen the biggest bbc ever it's kind of gay but it's not it's not gay if you're only reading the menu remember if you order it's gay we ain't gay we just you know i'm i'm down with the gays i think i've talked about this before i've got plenty of gay friends and they're actually a lot of fun. the best wingman on the fucking planet i'll argue it over and over and over again is a gay guy 100 percent. if you're a dude and you're looking for a wingman the best wingman on the planet for you is a gay guy it just like there's nothing better for this maybe maybe a lesbian maybe a gay woman but if you're a dude and you like and you want to slay some fucking actually like really good looking ass you gotta go out with a gay guy i'm telling you my i've got you know gay family members gay friends it does not bother me your sexual orientation your gender whatever the fuck you want to be called you can be called i don't give a shit does not bother me but the best wink man on the planet that i've ever had one either my gay cousin that i've went out with or one of my gay best friends very gay very gay friend and that dude is constantly surrounded by gorgeous women that want to be his friend and they're always introducing you to these women oh you're friends with him yeah baby you know me i'm down with the g-a-y's give me the rainbow give me the uh, no i'm not gonna go there i'm not gonna say it (laughs) but i'm telling you i've i've uh i've definitely like from my own doing i've struck out due to the fact but I've never, ever, ever went out with either of them. And like gorgeous women just flock around them. They want to be their friends. It's so fucking funny. It's strange that women want a gay friend. Why is that? I've never understood it. Is it because you want the companionship of a male without them trying to fuck you? You know, it's like a woman in a male's body. Not really, kind of. Well, kind of, sort of, if you're looking at it like that. You're both attracted to men. You both like, you know, most gay dudes like shopping. It's, I, 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 there's a stereotype, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like having a dude for a best friend that, you know, you get the mail and they're not really testosterone up. It's not like a, you don't got like a fucking man, you know, I don't got a man out there chopping wood, making sure the fire is set, making sure that there's water in the well making sure there's food on the table i'm killing deers killing moose it's like the polar opposite but they just love it i don't understand it i've never understood it but it works i'm telling you go out with a gay guy and just appreciate everything around you just appreciate it soak it all in it's a different experience it's actually a lot of fun i don't know how much i'm willing to go to a gay bar but I, if like I was with my friends and like like gay friends and they wanted to pop in there, it ain't gonna bug me, you know. And if anything, it's kind of flattering if a gay guy hits on you, you know what I mean? Like both, like especially if women and men are both hitting on you, that would be a good feeling. I don't care what anybody says. Fucking fist me, call me Jamie. I don't give a fuck. Like that's a 
that's that's a flattering thing. Like you're attra- you're attractive to both sexes. That's that's a compliment. That's a compliment, and you should run to the fucking hills with it. <laughs> oh fuck! Speaking of gay, I went and got uh, one of them lime scooters and went and bopped around on it uh, around the city. And uh, stupid me, I forgot to. Uh, I thought on the app once you get a certain distance away from the scooter that it turns off. I would have spent a dollar twenty to go from my one location to the other. It was a bar from bar. I didn't want to walk. There's one of the stupid scooters there, so I fucking it did the scan in and all that shit just to bop this thing up and down. Some motherfucker spotted that. And just rip this thing around the fucking city. So who? I hope the God that uh, whoever was ripping around a lime scooter all fucking pretty well from the hours I think of one thirty in the morning to like two thirty in the morning downtown Edmonton. You're welcome. I hope you're listening to this, and I really hope you enjoyed that fucking thing. It was only thirty bucks, but I should have only spent like fifty eight cents. <coughs> Excuse me. But that motherfucker went and had some fun on my on uncle's dime. So I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you had a splendid evening on those stupid things. Fuck. I love seeing the videos of dudes jumping them off stair sets and or down sets of stairs and just folding them in half, trying to wrap them across shit and like who thought of this idea is like a low key genius, but not fucking really. Cause it is just a money making scam. But now you're just provoking drunk people to get a DUI. Like that is all this is really fucking doing, you know, <laughs> like every we go, go toot around this fucking city that have these things. And where are they? They're all parked outside of bars. All of them. It's just a bunch of drunk people doodle bopping around the fucking city, having the time of their life, thinking that they can't get a DUI. I'm 90% sure you could get a DUI on them. I am no lawmaker by any means, but I am 90% sure you will get a DUI. Could you imagine the guy that gets a DUI on one of them, like, what do they, lime scooter or a bird scooter? God almighty. So can I just put a blow box on the scooter and then just tow it around the city still? Like, how does this work? I don't understand. Like, oh, man. Fuck. Scooters. Scooters, like, I don't know. At the end of the day, scooters are pretty gay. Like, uh, the push ones. You know what I mean? Like, those motorized ones, like, those, I can get by with them. But, like, I was watching, like, Nitro Circus. And no matter... How many fucking flips you do on a scooter off how big a jump, it is just still kind of gay, you know? It's, uh, and don't get, don't get offended. I'm not, I'm not saying like, oh, when, when I say it's gay, I mean like stupid. It's dumb. I, I don't mean like, like you're a fag or what, I, I don't know how to word this like correctly, okay? I'm not meaning it in that sense. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's stupid. So don't shun me. Don't ban me, iTunes. Fuck. But I'm just saying, like, watching these grown-ass teenagers, you know what I mean? Like, 16. At the age of 16, you should be honestly be in, like, a real action sport. Not scootering. You should be skateboarding, BMXing, hell, motocross. Something that is actually noble and you don't look like a fucking knob riding around trying to jump things with. Yeah, but I did a McTwister, a flare. I don't know what they call those fucking moves on it. I think they call it a flare. Did a flare off the off the mega ramp. You understand, say? Yeah, but you still look gay though. Like it's still like there's nothing there that justifies you as a person jumping a fucking scooter, doing a backflip. I don't care. Like, yeah, can I not do one? Of course I can't do one. But am I out here bragging about fucking doing backflips? No. Not at all. Not at fucking all. Oh. But let's get into... uh, I'm excited. I... I, uh, Oops. I threw up... uh, 
Instagram story asking for people to ask questions about the podcast or for me to answer on the podcast. And I, I actually enjoy these. I enjoy them when uh, um, people actually put time and effort into their uh, into their question, you know, like a little more than how did you start the danger cats? You know what I mean? Like something even personable or like, um, you know, just like an honest question, like a good one. Like this, for instance. Uh, this fellow's Instagram is Daniel.a.white. What province would you like to party? Oh, what province would you like to visit and do some partying? Honestly, uh, based off the people, Saskatchewan. Everybody I've met from Saskatchewan, uh, outside of Alberta, I'm exempting Alberta because uh, off this question because I'm here all the time. Like I live here, so. But like Saskatchewan just seems like a, I don't know. Everybody there just always wants to give her, and they're like relatively good people. Like I haven't met a dickhead from Saskatchewan. They're a little weird at times, just like the East Coasters. Maybe the East Coast too. But I would probably go with Saskatchewan the most just because I've like any time I've been out in public and like somebody from Saskatchewan is like came up and introduced themselves and we have a conversation and we get laughing. I immediately always seem to hit it off with them and we're giggling and uh, ripping on one another and it doesn't take long to um, meet them as a friend. So it it, uh, it certainly would probably be Saskatchewan. Um, oh, this one's good. Z hammer, Z E E hammer. Can your girlfriend fuck other girls without you? If you fuck other girls together all the time, of course, like, uh, I've never understood dudes that get mad about their old lady sleeping with another chick. Like, I think that's like pretty fucking deadly that like that's fucking pretty awesome like i don't know why you'd be mad because obviously like if she's down to fuck other bitches with you then uh i don't know like you kind of got a win-win man you get the fantasy of like your old lady banging other broads and so what like that's kind of fucking hot is it not like we've all watched lesbian porn and if your old lady's pulling some trim like like those and like you you know like fuck i don't know like it seems like a pretty fair off trade that you get to have three sums with her and fuck another bitch while you're uh with the old lady and you get the fantasy of her banging other chicks like i imagine that she's going to be a sweetie and send you videos and shit like that so yeah man i've of course i'm behind that a hundred percent. All right. Bianca underscore Prinz. P-R-I-N-Z. What's the most craziest experiences you've had at a bar night? Um, For the most part, like most of the events that we uh, throw on don't get like out of hand crazy. They just get really like, they're a lot of fun. Like I have a lot of fun meeting people and like, I really enjoy being out there and being with the public and having the opportunity to, you know, meet everybody. And it's a lot of fun and you hearing people's stories and shit like that. So it doesn't really get that crazy on the bar nights that we throw. But, um, one of the more kind of dumber things I've seen was I seen, uh, I'm not gonna name the town cause uh, that's just rude. Um, I seen two gentlemen square up in the middle of the street because they were arguing about uh, who followed the danger cats first and they beat the fucking nines off one another like like beat the shit out of each other for no apparent reason like the one guy's eyebrow was like hanging off his head I'm exaggerating it wasn't but he was split above the eyes bleeding all over the place and got kicked out of the bar because of it and I just so happen to be outside because when uncle gets drinking, he likes a good cig every now and then. So I was out having a little jet and uh, yeah, I, I witnessed this and like these two fucking munyaks ended up beating the tar out of one another over the fact of who who followed the fucking cats first, which is kind of fucking funny if you ask me. Not so much crazy, but uh, I hope that answered your question. 
Uh, all right. Davy White asks, who's the most ideal person in all of Canada to run for PM other than you? Kevin O'Leary. I would say like a guy like Kevin O'Leary with some like business sense and like, I don't know if he's got that. Like he, he seems like he's got a little bit of a human side to him. Like, I don't know. Like, it, I think it takes somebody that understands human nature and the shit that we need and also has a business sense that can make this country some fucking money, like get people working. That's your job. And, um, I don't know. That's, I'm by no means like some political science, uh, genius or of any of that sort. I just basically give a very dumbed down opinion about my politic or my political, uh, viewpoints. I don't trust any of them, to be honest. I think they're all scumbags. Like, look at, they spend more time trying to throw one another one another under the bus than they do actually preaching about what they plan on doing to better humans' lives and better the country. You know, how many ads have you seen being like, Andrew Shearer hates the gays. Justin Trudeau, he did a scandal. They just constantly remind you about all the bad that that person has done rather than the good they plan on doing, so... I don't think anybody really in this election has, um, fuck, I don't know. I don't, I don't think any of them have any business being there. I think they're all fucking stupid personally. I know that's not a very elaborate way of putting it, but I don't know. It's, it's kind of a shame to see like, you know, that. That's what politics has become, just a, a smear campaign. Who can smear the other guy the hardest just to get into office? So it's kind of a joke to me. Chance Derrickson asks, a time where you went to hook up and saw them in real life and left. Buddy, if you're a true danger cat, you don't let any opportunity leave your wayside. And I don't mean that pun intended. I mean, you get in there. You do the job. You do the dirty. That might be your last fuck. That might be your last fuck. And that goes for men and women. That might be your last fuck. Could you imagine? You're floating or whatever whatever you fucking believe in. And you're floating up to heaven. And you're looking down at your dead ass body. And you're like, fuck. If I would have went, I should have went and got laid one more time that would have been what if that was the best sex of your life you never know you don't know you never know big underscore ut ute what's the fattest woman you ever dick down my record is just under 419 pounds the fact that you know that is crazy how do you know that she was 419 pounds did you weigh her like <laughs> That's uh, that's ruthless. That's ruthless. But I don't know. Probably like I've dicked down some pretty big bitches and uh, I got no shame in my game, man. Uh, you got to. You got to. You got to experience a big girl. Those those ladies, they put it. They throw it back on you. Like they don't they don't care. They got zero care. They know the it, there's like this rule of thumb that I've always lived by. To hit on hard tens, you'll always be, like because they never get hit on. They're intimidating, and then they are very insecure most of the time when they think that they're hot. Sevens and eights don't even bother. They get hit on all the time. Big girls on the booty call roundup, you know the three a.m. pig scramble. They know what their job is. They are there to fuck. So when they take you home, they understand that like this is a one and done. I don't want you around. I don't want you here. And the big mamas that are out there and own their shit, respect, respect. Oh fuck, all the love to you. That's some that's some pimp pimp hooray shit. Like I can get down with that. Like a big woman that just owns her shit knows like where. Yeah, get over here. Give me that little fucking schmeckle that you got in your pants. And give me a fucking run for my money and then leave my house. Unless if you stay, I'll cook you a little something in the morning. Maybe grab some breakfast. Now, the real question is, if you went home with a big girl, you woke up in the morning, she offered you to take you home, drive you home back to your vehicle, and she said, yeah, you want to stop for breakfast? You hit the IHOP. Are you going in? Of course you are. Of course you are. No shame in your game. Stride of pride, always. It's always how you look at it. If you look at it like you did something shameful, 
They think you're going to be walking around with your head down. Fuck that. You walk with pride. You walk with pride. Stride of pride right into IHOP. She's paying for it. Shit. You wife her. That big mama. Big girls. They know how to treat you. What do we got here? Oh, shit. Um, Dean Bach 05. What inspired you to create a brand and empire based around partying? Um, honestly, I don't know. Um, partying, like, yeah, it might, it's, it is what it is, but, I, but in the same sense, like a brand that can honestly bring people together in the capacity that it does. And like, it's fucking rad that when somebody wears a danger cats, shirt hat something like that they instantly get recognized and get treated like uh um a celebrity of their own for, for that evening like it's crazy like uh the amount of snapchats that i see of people screaming at a person that's just wearing our merch and uh, yelling like do you fuck with the cats and like some of these people end up becoming friends over it which is like literally one of the most coolest feelings um uh, possible like uh, uh i it's hard to put into words for me like th what this is like created i've always like you know i've always been told stay humble on this and it's like i in 100 percent like always be humble like i i'm i don't regret creating this one bit there's some decisions in the business end that i wish i would have known earlier just to make this better you know um and just, you know, really bit, I wish I was really a little more cautious about the people that I brought into my life while starting this because it, it created some headaches, uh, unfortunately. But as far as the brand goes and like what it represents and what people pr perceive it as is f fucking cool. You know, like, yeah, did I start out by saying fuck Trudeau and fuck this and fuck that? But then it like kind of morphed into this, um, partying brand and like a little more like connecting people more so than making it uh divisive or uh, disconnecting people you know in a way so it's certainly like it's one of the coolest fucking things i i honestly can say is knowing that uh, somebody just wears some some of our merch or even even not even that like even for the fact of it being brought up and like people talk about it and then they become friends and like i've heard of so many stories of guys that uh uh just you know that this gets brought up danger cats gets brought up and they become friends they end up drinking that night or you know hanging out that night and then yo what are you doing you want to come to this party and then they go and hang out some more and like in some serious friendships have been made through it so yeah no i i'm uh it's 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 kind of inspired itself in this in this weird way i it's kind of a dumb way of saying it but uh i don't know i it's it's really rad it's really really rad and it's even more rad when I go out and somebody walks up to me and doesn't know that I'm the person that started it and they just go, oh shit, Danger Cats. That's awesome, man. I fucking love Danger Cats. So it's like, I know I don't think you're stupid if you do that. Like I don't expect everybody to know that I'm the guy that created it at, like by no means. And like, I'm not going to go out of my way to make sure that you know that I created it. It's just... It's cooler to me to know that the brand is uh, has that much leverage. You know what I mean? That that uh, it doesn't really need me being a, a jackass on the internet. So I don't know. Um, I hope it does carry on for quite some time and like continues bringing people together. And like, you know, that's why the parties are fun. You're just bringing people together. You know? Um, yeah. I hope that uh, answers. Uh, your question if you... okay this one dante.18.01 if you could change one thing about tim hortons what would it be going back to actually fucking giving a shit about your coffee it is so fucking bad now like 
horrible, horrible coffee. It is dog shit. It's only convenient. That's what it is. And you've masked the taste of that coffee with a, a, like a double double. What the fuck? It's just cream and sugar in that fucking thing. You don't taste the coffee. I'm a regular. I always get a large regular. So like there's, you know, minimal fucking a sugar and minimal cream as possible when it comes to it. I don't I've never seen a mix the fucking thing, but if I'm at a gas station, it's like half of one of those creamer cups that I would put in. And motherfucker, the coffee's always fucking burnt. Like, ah, I would change the whole fucking thing. I would go back to remember when Tim Hortons was like just fucking getting big and infiltrating small towns and like that was the place to go. That's what I'd change. I'd change it back to those days where they gave a shit. Red underscore necken underscore it asks, my question to you is what's your shit face 3 a.m. go to food? Man, uh, it, I change it up right now. Uh, it's been pizza. Like I find like a good pizza joint and go and hammer back two slices of Hawaii. That's right. I think pineapple goes on pizza. I don't give a shit. You're a fucking invalid. It, like anything can go on pizza. Pizza deserves every ingredient. So, but right now it's been for a while there though. I was heavy on the donairs. I would go shit face drunk by myself and go sit in uh, any donair shop. There was one right on Jasper Ave here in Edmonton, and I would go and just sit there and crush a donair, be absolutely shit faced. Ninety percent of the time, I'd puke it back up. But, <laughs> but that was uh, that was back in the day, you know, back when I was just a dummy um sorry i'm like trying to read with these questions and still talk uh, i'm not uh smart enough for those kind of uh, okay what's the best small ass town in alberta to party now obviously um oh it's just jeff nine ass now obviously i grew up in a small town and uh, my, of, of course, my favorite is always going to be my hometown of Tabor, Alberta. That's where I grew up. That's where, you know, uh, friends and family are. We, we, a lot of us have moved away. Um, so Christmas time rolls around. We all get together and we have a good time. And um, there's a, there's an event called Corn Fest, believe it or not. I mean, if, you're, if you're in Canada, you've probably heard of Tabor corn, especially Alberta, Saskatchewan, BC. You've heard of Tabor corn. That is my hometown. So we have this event called Corn Fest and it's absolutely phenomenal. It is a fucking great time. Um, small town party. It's free to the public to show up to. It, uh, it, it's just a phenomenal time. Like you can show up Go to the beer gardens, listen to live music. There's uh, tons of things that you can do with your family. The beer gardens is always great. It's always great in there. I'm running into guys I haven't seen in like, you know, eight years, 10 years. Unfortunately, I haven't been in the past two, three years. I believe, yeah, the past two years, I had three years, I haven't been to Corn Fest just due to, you know, what we're, what we've been up to with the cats, but uh one of these years i'm gonna get down there again and it's always been like one of those things that's close to home uh growing up you're always excited for corn fest you know you and your buddies are gonna go get smacked up go hit some rides and uh just have a good old time you know uh i've always like that was always one of the best things about that town growing up for sure so i i gotta go with my hometown of Tabor, alberta just for selfish reasons uh danger cat dan hell of a handle i uh i like that dan um he asked where do you want to see danger cats go and become in the next few years um obviously you know like it'd be cool to see the brand like uh expand and get into places that i never thought i would i could take it um and from a business uh perspective of course you always want to watch your business grow um as this like social end of things, like I really enjoy the direction that it's taking. Uh, I like uh, I like the things that are happening here. Like I, I enjoy for a long time, 
um i really disliked this i did not enjoy it uh to the fullest like i just felt uh like i was doing something wrong i constantly and like i said before you know i just had some people that i just felt like didn't care about me uh for me and you know like uh it just it just felt not natural where it's getting back to that you know we've changed a lot of things around here and um you know it's getting back to a place where like i enjoy making the videos again where before it was just forced and you probably could tell like from the earlier content to now and like just the stress of everything and you know um having the wrong people manage the money having the wrong people uh manage um you know um everything kind of inside like there was a lot of moving parts and nobody really knew what the fuck they were doing which is okay but uh at the end of the day i was left with, with it all and um it's time for me to go back to uh what what started this all you know having fun and like going to meeting people and and bringing the joy of danger cats back out and like for the longest for a year and a half i i truly did not like this um it was i i don't know how to word it um it was just depressing it was uh the past this past couple months have been like really depressing but to, you know, we, we've changed it around. And like in the last uncle hacks thoughts there, I was talking about mental health and like, I went through my little stint in the, where I didn't feel good about myself either. And like, I didn't feel like what I was doing was uh, worth anything, any self-worth. I didn't have that. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any, you know, and then, uh, you know, things started to change once I started changing the way I thought. And like, now this is, I'm surrounded by good people now. I'm surrounded by people that care. Um, you know, uh, there's just little things that uh, <clears throat> definitely stand out. No, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. That's my nose stuffed. Okay, but yeah, no. It, uh, that go that, that so like to see where it goes. I'm kind of cool with wherever it goes. You know, obviously, I don't want to be labeled some right wing fucking. You know nazi paraphernalia fucking dipshit show like i i i'm trying to step away from politics as much as i can and just like i think i'd like to see this include people more you know what i mean and like see people come together a little more rather than worrying about politics all the fucking time and i know i started by uh ranting and raving about trudeau it's just basically like any leader you put in there i have thoughts and feelings about what they're doing and what they're doing to people and how they manage the country's money uh i'm gonna have that regardless so i i would like to see it yeah like I, I, that's a very long-winded answer hack shut the fuck up and just tell the guy what he wants to hear where do you see this going i see it going very good i see it uh um yeah including a lot more people and making it just just to enjoy, just to remind people to enjoy their fucking life, man. Uh, uh, 306Pipeliner asks, do you miss working in the patch and what are some of your best memories? Yes and no. There's things I miss about the oil patch. I definitely miss the camaraderie of people I've like had the pleasure of working with. Uh, do I miss like, uh, my previous job in the patch? No, not one bit. I don't miss it at all. I don't, uh, I don't miss getting up for an hourly wage. Certainly I would rather, um, chase a dream and do something that I, I, I actually like doing like this and like creating content and video production and, uh, you know, content creation. I, I think I said that already, but, uh, no, I, uh, there's a lot of good memories there. Like I certainly do like look back and I'm like, man, I had a lot of fun working in the oil patch and I've met like a lot of good fucking people, um, in the patch. And some of them have like became like really good friends of mine over the, over the course of years working with them and getting to know them the way I did. But do I miss it? Not necessarily. Like I, I'm not, I don't mind getting up early as long as it's on my own terms. As soon as like somebody like is telling me that I have to be at a certain place at a certain time, I start, 
I get very stubborn in that sense. So like, I don't miss that. I like making my own rules and abiding by my own rules because I set them. I, I'm very selfish in that matter. But yeah, dude, no, there is things that I definitely miss. Um, my best memory was probably, uh, I was on a commissioning crew out in white court and I worked with two fellas from, uh, Grand Prairie. Um, they were electricians and, uh, those two guys made like those, I think I was up there for two and a half weeks, three weeks on a camp job or a out of town job. And those two guys just made the job so much more easier and fun to be on site and constantly looking for something to joke around with. They made the mood was always light and they were always, uh, I don't know. It was just like a good fucking fun time. Yeah, that's for sure. I could sit there and tell stories for hours about the shit we got up to. But I mean, if you worked in the oil patch, you know exactly what uh, the boys like to do. Um, oh, this is a good one. Davy 1518. You crash land on an island and can bring only one person and three things. Who and what is it? So I've been watching a lot of Naked and Afraid lately. So... My mans, I know what to bring. I know what to bring. And if I'm bringing anybody, I'm bringing a motherfucker like uh, like Bear Grylls or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Like some gnarly dude that can just like scale the land. I'm not looking for company. I'm looking for somebody that knows what the fuck they're doing. And like the three th three items, easy, naked and afraid, buddy. I've already got this dialed in. I need a machete, a fire starter, and a fucking pot. Done. Done. Too easy. Tits. Tits. Oh, well, fuck. I fucking look down and read my uh, question. Chef, boy, ard, ed. Okay. Sick handle. I like it. Tits or ass? Ass. I'm an ass guy. I, uh, reasoning big, I remember being a young lad and watching rap videos and watching them girls shake them asses like that, and it just got me. Nailed me right in. Ever since then, big butts. Plus, uh, right before um, or right after dial up internet became non existent and faster internet came around and porn kind of just surged the internet. Do you guys probably remember a porn star, Rachel Starr, the way she could shake her butt? That just like, that did it for me. That was my, that was it. And ever since, huge butt guy. Love big butts that just jiggle. It's just sick, sick. It's the sickness in me instilled. Uh, Brady 050891, what is the number one stupidest video someone has sent you? Is stupidest a word? Uh, dumbest video, um, I've seen like, there's some dumb shit sent to me that I don't even post. I don't even like, I don't even respond back because it's pretty gnarly and pretty dumb. And I like, I'm not out to watch people like kill themselves. The dumbest thing I've honestly been sent some guy cut off his pinky toe for a fucking can of chew and then uh, took it to the hospital i don't know if he got it put back on or they just soldered it but he cut off his fucking pinky toe for a fucking can of chew now i know it wasn't for our channel i think it was just a dumb drunken bet but yeah he uh he definitely did that and that was probably one of the dumbest things i've ever seen like no money no nothing oh man Fuck. Oh, we got some good ones now. Croswell, seventeen seventy six. What up? Uh, worst ass eating experience. My first time got pink eye. Bitch must have had crack crumbs. <laughs> Damn. I don't think I've ever had a bad experience eating ass. To be honest, uh, I uh, yeah, no, I I don't really. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Like. Uh, can't think of a, a bad experience of uh, tongue punching a fart box, you know, like licking an onion ring, chomping down on uh, the brown eye. Yeah, I I got nothing for you, man. I'm sorry. Majestic underscore unicorn. Unicorn sp spelt with a zero. How far do you think you can punt an eight pound baby? I mean, like in the terms of punting, like what's a football probably weigh? No one it can't be a pound. It's got to be, you know, and so. Uh, I could probably kick a football probably 40 yards, I would say. So I'm going to say I could probably, like, being, like, 
like a very calculated guess here. Like I'm gonna say like I could probably kick uh I could probably kick for an eight pound baby ten feet. Ten feet maybe. I'd take ten feet to eight pounds is a lot, man. Like if you like you know those medicine balls, you ever kicked one of those? Now now picture that as a baby. So I would probably say like I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna say eight to ten feet right in there, right in that ballpark. Foul underscore Clark asks, "Would you let a man give you a blowjob if he offered you ten million dollars?" Hell yeah! That is an easy question because a it's gay for pay, and are you actually gay if he's paying you and you're not sucking the dick? You understand? Like, uh. I don't know. Like that's a pretty easy one. I just close my eyes and let him fucking like. I did. And again, I guess how much like does it blow job to finish? Like I don't know. Like if they start asking me, "Hey hack, where'd you get ten million dollars?" Well, I let some guy suck my dick. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, no, seriously, man, where'd you get it? I let some guy suck my dick. Oh, fuck, dude, you're so funny. No one would ever believe you. Because no, what man would pay you $10 million to suck your dick? If there's a man out there willing to pay me $10 million to suck my dick, by all means, where are you? I'll whip it out. I'll even have a pre-hard for you to save you a fucking little bit of work. Done and done. Show me the money. And I want it in cash. Burden.nick. The worst slash best one night stand. Like, a, uh, Do you want both? Okay. One of the weirdest ones, how about this? I'll meet you in the middle and uh, tell you the weirdest one. The weirdest one night stand is uh, I was at Boss Hogs in Lethbridge, Alberta, just getting fucking greased. This is probably like four, fuck, five years ago, five, four or five years ago, quite some time ago. And uh, I started partying with this the, this fucking guy came out of nowhere, like just started handing me shots, handing me shots, and then we were shooting the shit, and he was just a wild ass, just insane. Me and him were having the fucking just thick as thieves. And uh, I don't know what ins- co-inspired this or what happened, but his sister ended up with us, and he just got me fucking pinned, drunk as fuck. And we go to this after party, and then he's like telling me to hit on his sister, trying to get her to fuck me. I ended up fucking his sister. And uh, the weirdo, fu- uh, like, yeah, f- for the brother got me hammered and then got, or the dude got me hammered, then dished off his sister for me to fuck. It was the most weirdest experience I've ever had, but also the best experience. Get, got hammered for free. He didn't spend a fucking dime and got laid all in the same family. Whoever... Whoever you two are, you're good people. Your mother and father raised you to be good people. I respect you. I'm not talking low on you. I'm not talking shit on you. I respect it. I respect it. I respect it to the core. That is the greatest fucking thing that's uh that's that, that's like a lottery win. That ain't gonna happen again, hack. So you gotta you gotta take those in stride. Uh, Garner Girl 13. Out of all your friends and Tabor, which dude would you end up in jail with? Oh, man. There's a few. I would probably say, like, my buddy Tibbs. My buddy Tibbs, he's a wild ass. He's he's a good time. Uh, I could see us probably getting into some trouble. Um, who else? Uh, probably one of my buddy, uh, the my Kerner buddies. Tyler and Logan, I could probably see us getting fucking locked up together. And my buddy Olsen. Those three right there, I could definitely, or sorry, those out of those four guys, it's an absolute crapshoot. Uh, I would say at any moment in time, we would probably be knocking on the jo- door of jail every time we hang out. So uh, I, I would go with those four guys. So uh if you're a Tabor person and you don't know who they are they're the we're the we're the ogs man um it's hilarious once you get to that age you got to pass the torch down now i'm watching all these other little fuckers just go absolutely nuts so in that town and it's lovely caesar underscore poppy how many times have you eaten ass every time boom roasted boom roasted every time you can't not not eat ass. 
Uh, here we go. Benjamin underscore Stanek. Stanek. I don't know how to say your last name, bro, so I'm sorry. Would you rather have all the alcohol you want or a couple of fat bitches that cook and clean? All the alcohol. Because what do you think the fat bitches want? They want some alcohol. You already have all the alcohol. So, boom. You are all, you're already granted the fat bitches. I get both by taking one. That was an easy question to answer, my friend. Queen Shell asks, how many followers have you had sex with? Honestly, uh, I don't know. I uh, Random hookups. Uh, I, I like lately not I don't think any followers to be honest like maybe if they are a follower but I don't know I it's just strange like the celebrity aspect of it that somebody would want to fuck me based on how many Instagram followers I have I find it fucking weird but uh yeah but anyways that's the end of all the questions um Thanks for tuning in. I, I know I sound like shit and I'm really raspy and sniffling and coughing and sounding like a fucking jackass, but I appreciate you tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Just a reminder, if you use the code DC69 on DangerCatShop.com, you'll get 15% off your order today. That's right. We're giving deals out still because that's how we roll. <laughs> Anyways, give us a follow at DangerCat69 and also follow my personal one, UncleHack69. Uh, if you got any questions, by all means, DM me. Um, we'll put it on the podcast. I love answering uh, fan questions. It's kind of uh, it's fun for me. We'll make it a staple on the podcast now where we, where we answer some fan questions. But, uh, yeah, thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and we'll see you next week, motherfuckers. I understand we missed a week, but, hey, fuck me, right?